I have essentially been living in Harmon. Essentially, my life from before your documentary ended with that phone interview. And since then, I have been living by my wits. Two of you, two cameras. I was under the impression that it would only be you and your camera. All right, Victor, duly noted, but you did come to us yes. and request this interview. Yes. And you did request money, which you've been paid. Yes. Per your in insistence, uh, it was just to be me, yes. and I'm not a professional cameraman, so I did bring along a second cameraman uh, to shoot some additional footage so we have something to cut to. Okay, on B-camera? Uh, B-camera set. Okay, okay, here we go. So, Victor, here we are. Well, I must say that I never expected to hear myself called Victor again, or to find myself in disguise in front of the camera again. It's now been uh, 11 years uh, since we last conducted that interview. Yes, the Art Bell interview you arranged for me. In May 1997, as the interview progressed, I began to uh, get a different sense, and that was that um, he was scared. I think Victor really is scared. That was a pleasant experience, to say with some sarcasm. Looking back on it now, 11 years later, you didn't want to do it. I did not want to do it on the day that I did it. You and, and that, uh, that rocket man foisted it upon me after we had made an agreement uh, for one on-screen appearance in your little documentary, and then somehow that agreement metastasized into an ongoing series of promotional appearances, which was not part of the agreement. You agreed to do that one phone interview with Art Bell Coast to Coast uh, to promote the video at the time. Which was a live interview, and I had made it abundantly clear that I was not to be put in a position of revealing my whereabouts in a live situation. Uh, again, Victor, with all due respect, you knew that the Art Bell show was live. You say that now, that's not how I remember it, but in any case, it's a thing of the past. Well, in any event, you contacted us for this interview. This, is, this situation has not been of my choosing. If I came to you and requested, as you say, I, in fact, I find that characterization insulting. I did not request to give you information. I offered you information. Yes, I did demand payment. Certainly, I demanded that I would not have been given it had I not demanded it. You are the businessman. You are the filmmakers, the video makers, the documentarians, you and that, that rocket man, you have made whatever profits have been made over the last decade off of the, <laughs> I can't think of a reason why I would want to be giving you information were it not for the money. Certainly any illusions I had that my information might actually spur the government have been sadly mistaken. It's been 11 years since I brought out that tape. What follow-up has there been? Who among these so-called ufologists, these self-proclaimed investigators, show me one of them that's demanded information about S-4 under the Freedom of Information Act. Show me one of them that has seriously attempted <coughs> to confirm or deny the existence of the alien interview program. All they care about is talking among themselves and making videotapes, making documentaries, promoting themselves, 
Do you at least feel vindicated that no one has conclusively debunked the tape? What the only vindication that I could imagine would be if the government finally revealed all that they know about these aliens. So are you saying that the internet truth seekers are not living up to your expectations? <laughs> that is an understatement. Well, I should say they perhaps are living up to my expectations since my expectations were admittedly low to begin with. All the days in which people uh, took Bob Lazar seriously. And uh, who, who is that person in your, uh, in, in your documentary, that, uh, that Morton character? Sean David Morton. Yes, <laughs> a researcher. What has he discovered to corroborate or debunk the interview since that time? He was more than happy to take it at face value then when he, he too was being paid. I assume you paid him as well as me. All of these people are charlatans. All of these people are at best hobbyists and at worst professional con men. Well, I'm, I'm assuming that you saw, you've seen the finished product. What did you think of Bob Dean's interview, the retired NATO commander? Well, he, he took the video at face value, but that was a case of being correct by accident. What about Rick Baker? Uh, Rick Baker's won Academy Awards. Rick Baker is a professional makeup artist. Artist. <laughs> a makeup businessman. It's in his best interest to say that he can do much better than the real thing. And that other, that other makeup man, the same goes for him, the... Uh, John Criswell. John Criswell, yes. They both, they, they both were happy to brag that they could create a more realistic alien. Fine, well, where is it? In the Men in Black movies? In that ridiculous alien autopsy footage? Show me a more authentic alien than the one in that interview. By all means, if these makeup people are capable of creating a more realistic alien, <coughs> then show me, compare it, place it before the public. These, these people are show people. Everything for them is hyperbole. My contempt for the viewers of your documentary over the last 11 years knows no bounds. They've been like children, mocking it, or on the other hand, credulously accepting it with no attempt to evaluate the material on its own merits, or to discover any new material to support or debunk it. This is not a joke. This is not a hoax. Certainly I'm staking my reputation on it. If an anonymous individual in a rubber mask could be said to be staking his reputation on anything, I challenged these ufologists to debunk me, discover my identity. <laughs> if, it, if they really believe that the alien interview footage is a hoax, prove it. Show where it was faked. If they believe that the alien in that footage is a puppet, Prove it. Find the puppet maker. If they believe that I am a hoaxer, prove it. Discover my real identity. It certainly doesn't matter to me at this point. Do you need some water? Let me say... It does, no. No. Let us finish this. All right. Let's move on uh, to some new areas. How do you respond about rumors in the UFO community that Cheney and Rumsfeld have known about the EBE since the Nixon administration? <laughs> well, certainly Cheney knows everything there is to know within the government. There's not much that is kept secret from the general public that Cheney does not know. As for Rumsfeld, Rumsfeld is a bombastic clown but he has certainly shown quite a bit of interest in new technologies, shall we say. I will, I will say this uh, to those, uh, those UFO researchers who uh, seem to be sitting on their hands waiting for someone else to bring them information. If you uh, do your research and discover where Rumsfeld was in the middle of March of this year, I think you will learn 
a few things that perhaps you would like to know. Would you care to elaborate? No, I would not care to elaborate, and I frankly don't think that you, the producers of this documentary, would like for me to elaborate. Do you think that President Bush has been kept up to date on our ET program, <laughs> or that Cheney has kept all the information from him? President Bush, now there is, there is a puppet. There is your artificial marionette. And, and no one seems to be able to identify him as an artificial president. Why should they be able to recognize a real alien when they see one? You, yeah, you, president, Bush, president Bush is irrelevant. Irrelevant to the process. Irrelevant to the process of government. And certainly irrelevant to the decision making uh, that goes on from the vice president's office. While we're talking about the current administration, uh, what are your thoughts about 9-11? I'm not going to talk about 9-11. You're not going to talk about 9-11? 9-11 is like the Bermuda Triangle. 9-11 is not part of this story, so shall we say that? Are the EBs still at the base in Utah? The base at Utah. In the Art Bell interview in 1997, you alluded, I believe more than alluded, yes, to the yes. fact that the EBEs were moved from Area 51 oh, yes, to Ford, which has been to the base in Utah. Yes. Are the EBEs, in your opinion, with your knowledge, are they still at the base in Utah? The EBEs, to my knowledge, are all at this time deceased, if you want to call it that. Before we go any further, I just want to say to you, not, not to your viewers, but to you and to that, that rocket person, that this will be the last time you ever see me. This will be my last statement, bar none. And this time I can say that with conviction because it seems that, it seems that my, this, this container has reached its expiration date. I, I am apparently not long for this world. So, this will be my final testament. And what is your final testament? Thank you for the compassion. As I intimated on the Art Bell interview, my involvement with S4 and the Alien Interview Program did come to an end in 1997, and I have not been involved with the Black Ops Program for more than a decade. <clears throat> However, I have been in contact with certain individuals who are still involved in attempting to make sense of the information that was gathered before the aliens discorporated. And I'm here to tell you, gentlemen, that if I am not long for this world, you are not much longer. As the, as the Bible thumpers say, the end times are upon us. The end of the world? The end of the world. We have been tested and found wanting. The aliens came, they presented themselves to humanity. They were taken and held and questioned and allowed to die. And now the reckoning is at hand. <laughs> Let me give a task to these so-called investigators, these ufologists. Look into the record and attempt to determine where Donald Rumsfeld was on March 23rd of this year. What is the significance of this Rumsfeld date that you keep referring to? Donald Rumsfeld has been aware of the alien interviews at least since 1974, in the last days of the Nixon cabal. And even when he was out of government, he managed to keep his hand in. But it was not until the bogus telepath program was finally exposed within the secret black ops operation 
that the true translation, that the true meaning of the alien communication was made clear to him. And since then, I think you will find he has lost all interest in the United States and the trivial earthly power. His sole interest now is to find a way to be one of those who are taken off when the end comes. So what you're saying is the biblical end times are upon us? Is that what you're telling me? It's rather childish to call them biblical since the Bible itself is simply a smokescreen. These aliens come from the universe of science, not the universe of religion. Religion is a deliberate misinformation campaign started by those who first encountered the aliens and first kept that knowledge to themselves. Donald Rumsfeld is, is merely one of the last of the line of those who try to maintain personal control over information that should have been made public to the entire human race. And now that he understands exactly what it is these aliens have been trying to tell us, he has completely lost interest in the rest of humanity. His sole concern is to be one of the few, one of the, the what he considers to be the elite, the, <laughs> the, the elect specimens, if you will, the elect specimens who are taken off the earth before the final trumpet sounds. Well, I have to tell you, this sounds an awful lot like Armageddon. I mean, uh, 2012, the Mayan calendar. The Zolkin calendar is another inaccurate representation of what we are talking about. The date 2012 is not accurate. The Mayans considered themselves to be far better mathematicians than they actually were. In point of fact, the date is very close, but not 2012. Not 2012. Not within my lifetime that's left of it. And certainly within yours. Let's just say that I wouldn't play on a 20th anniversary edition of this documentary. My head is a, a beehive. You're not really saying, uh, well, I... Après moi, le déluge. Le déluge solaire. <laughs> I won't be here for it, but you gentlemen will. Was it Seneca? I think it was... No, it was Strato who said, When I am gone, let earth and fire mix. It will mean naught to me.